Hello, we are in beautiful Beirut, Lebanon for the World Allergy Organization 2019 WIS Conference, which is co-sponsored by the World Allergy Organization and the Lebanese Society of Allergy and Immunology. Over the past three days, we have been attending some sessions that give us highlights and key findings in the area of allergy and clinical immunology. One of the distinguished speakers is here with me today, and that's Dr. Michael Levine. And he's going to share with us some key findings from one of the topics of his presentation. Dr. Levine, what topic have you decided to share with us today? Well, I spoke about some interesting new findings in alpha-gal related meat allergy that I think might be of interest. So tell us exactly what alpha-gal meat allergy is. Alpha-gal is a very unusual allergy in that instead of being to a protein, it's to a carbohydrate. And furthermore, that carbohydrate antigen, which is found in all non-primate mammalian meats, gives people a very unusual form of anaphylaxis, which instead of being immediate onset, like normal food allergy, is delayed for between three and six hours before it occurs. And in terms of telling the primary care physician as well as the allergist, how would you diagnose this condition? Well, first of all, having a high index of suspicion, particularly in parts of the world where the syndrome is concentrated, it seems to occur predominantly in the southeastern parts of the United States of America, in parts of Central Europe, including Germany, um, Switzerland, uh, further north in uh, Norway, and then also in Sweden. Uh, there are cases that have been reported from Japan, there's a large number of cases in Australia, and then we have our new cohort which is in South Africa. So that unusual history of anaphylaxis that doesn't occur necessarily in close contact to a known trigger, sometimes it is misdiagnosed as idiopathic anaphylaxis because that link isn't clear, in a high-risk area should really be considered for alpha-gal allergy. Unlike other forms of allergy where there are skin prick tests available, there are no real commercially available skin prick tests available for this particular form of red meat allergy, but there is a commercially available immunocap test uh, against the alpha-gal uh, itself. Is there any cheap um, test that you could do on the skin that would give the allergist an idea if they don't have alpha-gal immunocap available? Yes, yeah, some people advocate using a prick-to-prick -prick test with native extracts. That's got various degrees of sensitivity and specificity. Uh, some people are quite open to the idea of having raw meat pricked into their skin. Uh, other people have used gelatin, and some people have used the monoclonal antibody cetuximab. But the immunocap test is probably more accurate than the skin prick tests especially now that there has been some new progress made in delineating what is a normal range of alpha-gal that is not associated with allergy and a higher value that is, that is more closely related to symptomatic red meat allergy. So for the patient, the question would be, do I have to avoid all red meat and everything that contains gelatin from now and forever? Well, the syndrome is very weird in that it is presumed throughout the world to be induced by being bitten by a tick and unlike many other food allergens uh, over the course of time your antibodies level seems to decline quite nicely so many people in fact regain natural tolerance that's not the case in everyone and we have patients who have long-standing meat allergy and indeed if you are re-exposed to the tick with another bite then your antibody levels will climb again, meaning that you will again become resensitized and clinically allergic. If you do have high level sensitization, then it is recommended that you avoid all forms of red meat, although there is data showing that uh, fatty portions of meat and meat that is derived from inner organs is higher in concentration of alpha-gal and is particularly risky for people with that syndrome. And if you could choose one area of research in this particular field over the next five years uh, to devote unlimited funds, what, where would you put that money? Well, funny you should mention that. 
Uh, I've applied for a grant which hopefully will become successful on the second application, which is to look at the immune pathways that are upregulated during an actual reaction, which would be interesting because we have really no idea why there is a delay in the onset of this reactivity and whether the same pathways are upregulated with normal food-related anaphylaxis and alpha-gal-related anaphylaxis. So what we would like to do is, in a non-specific way, uh, extract peripheral blood mononuclear cells from the blood of people at various time courses during a reaction and then look at those PBMCs using a proteomics uh, basis so that whatever pathways are upregulated can be identified and hopefully let us have progress in understanding the pathophysiology of this interesting condition. Exciting. I hope you get that grant and we <laughs> have all those answers. Thank you very much, Michael, for joining us today and sharing that information. Thank you, Diana. It's been a pleasure.